I think when building a creative space, we really want that space to be comfortable, relaxing, and a place we want to be. Well, Alice has sure managed those things with her studio. Let's take a look at it. Um, welcome to my studio. My name is Alice Abbott. I live in Codrington, Ontario, and I'm happy to show you around. I have three Leclerc looms. It began because I went to a spinning event and at that spinning event, there was a loom for sale and I had no idea about weaving at all. So I looked to the woman beside me and I said, I couldn't buy a loom, I wouldn't know what to do with it. And of course she said, I'll teach you how to weave. And it went from there. I started with my 36 inch Nihilus and it's been a great uh, floor loom. It's a Jack loom. Nothing on this could ever come out looking bigger than a shawl. So I went looking for a 45 inch loom. Uh, this is what I found. So this is my 60 inch uh, colonial and it's uh, much bigger than the 45 I wanted, but it's so great. I wanted to have better lighting because my other two looms are near the window and I get a lot of natural light. So I am very lucky that my husband is so handy. He put lights right on my loom for me and they're wired right in. Also, I can like adjust them so I can move them. When I got this one, I love that I could do eight shaft patterns. I didn't like lifting these gigantic harnesses. If I wanted to do an eight shaft scarf for um, even tea towels, I went for. Now we're back to the Minerva. I bought this from a former guild member and it's as old as the hills and it needed a lot of um, kind of finessing to get it to work but now it's working fine and I'm, I'm enjoying working, it, uh, working with it quite well. And I like, again, being by the window, so I get a lot of the natural light. Maybe we'll go back here again. I usually have bits of whatever I'm working on next on the end of my table. So these are fibers I'm working with right now. These are towels that are sitting here waiting to be hemmed. It's usually a big jumble of things on this table. Friend who makes lovely baskets. So she made me this great little work basket. It has everything on it that I need. And here's my Swift, here's my ball winder. I also do rug hooking. And so this is my cutter. For anybody else that does rug hooking, you know that this is a, called a Beeline Townsend. It cuts different sizes of wool for rug hooking. You just slide it in here and this cuts it into beautiful strips that are all evenly um, cut. The very first rug hooking piece I did, I, I did the entire thing by cutting it by scissors and it took forever. I do have a sectional warping beam that I don't use anymore. I took it off of my big loom, but the, this is the rack for the spools. So my warping board is over there. We'll get there eventually, but I do have a warping mill as well. As we move along, I have um, cupboards here. I'm very, very lucky that I've been gifted all kinds of materials. A lot of my hand spun goes into these, these um, cupboards. It's kind of random. I'm not as organized as some people are. I know where they are and if I want them, I can put my hands on them. Uh, a lot of these are singles. Um, I have lots and lots of different colors in singles. This little cupboard is actually perfect because it has all my extra heddles in it. It's got tons of paper. It's got masking tape. It's got paper clips. It's got all that junk that you need when you're at a planning stage. This is where I can wind um, bobbins for weaving. I only use the hand winding bobbin um, when it's um, heavier, heavier wool. I do have an electric um, bobbin winder downstairs on my husband's workbench. So when I'm winding something finer, I go downstairs and use the electric one. I have my warping board over here, lots of natural light, which I really enjoy. So right beside my warping board is what I call my study area, I guess. With the OHS courses, I like to do a lot of the reading. So there's always a great bibliography which eat with each unit, and I try to get as many of the books that are on there as I can. And I love sitting here and doing all the reading before I try that structure. I love putting music on. So I always, I have a great playlist on Spotify and I never am up here without music playing. And I have different music I like for different things I'm weaving or different times of the day. To me, weaving and music go together because I think there's a lot of rhythm that happens in weaving. And so I really enjoy that. To me, weaving, my favorite part is the planning 
and the dressing of the loom. I love doing all that. When I sit down and actually start weaving, sometimes I get a little bored. I like to have a podcast to listen to. It just makes that time go by because um, it's funny because the actual mechanical weaving is not my favorite part of weaving. The pattern that I'm doing over on my Minerva right now is a summer and winter pattern. It's probably the best learning I've learned so far. It really kept my mind engaged. So it, I'm, I couldn't put on any music when I first started doing this because there was so much going on thinking wise. And I love that. This bigger area here is definitely a gathering area. I belong to two weaving study groups and I can invite people to come here. Study groups meet in each other's homes. So we take turns having people over and there's plenty of space here for people to spread out, bring their projects. Like all fiber people, we don't like to just sit. So people bring their spinning wheels, they spin, bring knitting, um, whatever they want to work on. I call this my little kitchen area because this is not attached to the house, it's separate from the house. Um, if I want to come up here and I plan on spending the whole day, especially if it's the winter time or if it's a really rainy, stormy day, I can bring my lunch up, I bring everything up that I want for the whole day and I stay, I stay put. When um, friends come and they're staying for the day, they can put their lunch in the fridge. I have a little microwave. I have my kettle and my tea. My friends know I'm a total tea nut. I always have a cup of tea on my hands and um, I have my little cupboard that houses everything I need. I have this little cupboard where I store all my cotton. The cotton is in the bottom part and the or I also have Orlec that I keep in the top um, just because they're smaller cones and I had this cute little cupboard and it kind of worked for me. This is my favorite spinning wheel. This is a uh, Kromsky Symphony. It is absolutely what I call my Cadillac of spinning wheels. I love it. It's a double treadle. Um, it just spins beautifully. So this is my favorite wheel to spin on. But this is my wheel I spin on at home. I have a Joy Ashford, which is a traveler. It's a very easy spinning wheel to take with you. So I can just hoist it onto my shoulder. It, um, leaves my hands free to carry whatever bags of things I want to take with me. The reason I went from this one to other spinning wheels is the fact that it's always packed up was a bit of a deterrent. So this one basically stays packed and ready to go. I do have several um, carters. This is one set that uh, is just handy. Maybe when we um, take a look outside, I'll show you my balcony. I often sit outside and card wool. I like doing it outside because the little bits and slugs that you don't want, you can just sort of throw into the air. My son built me this beautiful rack for me to be able to display my um, hand wovens. So I just wanted to show you outside as well. When we first built this, um, we had five windows going straight across and a friend came over one day and said, wow, it's so beautiful. I wish I could just go out there. And I'm very lucky to have a husband who can make those dreams happen for me. And so I asked him, couldn't we just have like a door and a deck? And he went, yeah, we can do that. And this is what we got. So this deck area is um, where we can come outside. We can spin here. We can have meetings here. We can be working inside and stop and come out and have tea or have lunch. And um, it's also a really nice place for me to just come out sometimes, leave the weaving stuff and, and think a little bit about what I want to work on next. I feel very lucky to have this beautiful space. We couldn't decide what kind of flooring to put in here because it is a big area and um, we kept tossing around a bunch of different ideas. And if you've noticed, I'm always barefoot. So I like the feel of something comfortable under my feet. And this is actually just the subfloor. We ended up doing nothing. This was from a YouTube video I saw and you can change your sub flooring to make it look as though you have nice wide board flooring. My husband got down on his hands and knees with a router and made these little groove markings to create the board look in this in right in the wood and then we painted it and that was it and it was the cost of the paint and our labor that was it we also had a problem because drywall sheets come in eight foot sheets 
and they, it was too narrow to get them up. So these are all smaller. They had to be cut into four foot pieces. And my husband said there was no way he was going to do all the mudding up there. And so ended up putting up these and it covered up all the joins, but it gives this really nice dimension to the ceiling. So what made you decide to start weaving? I think that just seeing other people's um, finished products and being so amazed that someone could make such a thing. And I thought, I want to do this too. Also the, the fact that I met a friend who, I, like we called them enablers, she totally made it possible for me to have this happen. And how did you learn to weave? So uh, my friend actually came here, I think two or three times here to my house and helped me get started, put on a, my first warp. Um, and then I went to her house and I saw the looms she had and what she made and how she worked. She gave me so many tips. I think every weaver has um, ways that they learn to weave and when they pass that on to you, it becomes the way you weave. There are lots of little tips that because I was a new weaver, didn't realize these were tips that not everybody else did. And so now some of those tips I'm passing on to people who um, I've taught uh, to weave to. Do you have a favorite loom? That's kind of hard. Each of my looms does something different for me. I love my, my big 60 inch loom because I love to weave blankets. So I like the width I can get on it. I love my 36 inch loom because sometimes you don't want that great big heavy lifting of those shafts and it's just the right size for things like shawls. I want to do an eight shaft pattern, then I like my little Minerva. So it really depends. I'm not too crazy about a table loom. I do have an old Dorothy. That's not my favorite thing. Do you have a favorite structure? I'm finding that I like things that are more complicated when you start weaving because if it's very, very simple weave, I get bored quickly. I do like twills. I think twills are fascinating because there's a lot to explore in twills because I used to think, oh, it's just one, two, three, four. And, uh, but there's, I think I have a lot of things I still want to do with twills. Do you have a favorite yarn? I definitely love wool. I am, am such a big fan of wool. I think it's because I learned to knit when I was very young. I actually lived and worked in Newfoundland for five, um, almost four, four years and um, spent a lot of time knitting out there because everybody knits and everybody has wool. And then now I have several friends who are shepherds. So I go and I help them with their sheep and with the shearing. I just love the feel of wool. I love that wool when you're weaving. Wool is very forgiving. It's very easy to fix errors in your weaving with wool. Do you have any other related hobbies? I started this whole fiber adventure with rug hooking and I love rug hooking. I have some that are uh, my husband is, has framed for me and have up in the house. I have gifted um, different rugs. I have them in my home on the floor. I have them here in my studio on the floor. I tend to do original patterns. It's fun to come up with an idea and then just uh, um, make it come to life. I love to spin because of the connection I have with sheep. There are many people who buy rovings already made, already dyed. In the house, in the basement, I have a dye area and I do a lot of my own dyeing. So I um, like to get the fleece right from the sheep. I bring it home, I wash it, I card it. I have a big drum carter, so I make bats and um, I spin and then I dye and then I decide what it's going to become. So it could become a weaving project, it could go into my rug hooking, it could uh, become a hand knit sweater. I may mostly make things for family and friends and often I have people ask me, could you make this, could you make me that? So um, that's, that's where a lot of my fiber goes. I think I like weaving better in that weaving has so much more to know and understand. When you learn to rug hook, you basically have your backing and you have your hook and you learn to pull a loop. And once you've done that, you know how to rug hook. And spinning, once you get that rhythm and you know how to, you know, feed the fiber and, and it's like a rhythm. And once you get that, you know how to spin. With weaving, it's just this mind blowing thing to me. It's like, there's so much math, there's so much, there's so many structures to explore. Um, anyway, it, with weaving, it's a, it's a learning that just goes on and on. So that's why I think weaving is my favorite. How do you fit weaving into your day? 
my day is my own. I'm retired. I am very lucky that I have lots of leisure time, but it's so full. I often have grandchildren and children coming over, but there are lots of hours where I just say, this is my time. I'm an early morning person. I love to get up early and this is where I usually am, up here. I, I feel lucky that I don't have to juggle a job or juggle um, children at this point. Um, so my time is my own and I make it happen. Alice did such an amazing job designing that studio. It felt like I was at a retreat. I could imagine myself doing yoga on the deck, having a cup of tea in the lounge. And speaking of that lounge, did you know that that couch makes out to a king size bed? I know Alice isn't going to give up her studio anytime soon, but if she wanted to rent it out as a leaving retreat, I'm sure she would be sold out. If you liked this video, please be sure to check out this one or this one. I'll meet you there.